Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, I'm your host Prince Insomniac aka Princey and today we will be discussing and going into a semi deep dive review, whatever you want to call it, on a game I was kind of avoiding for a very long time now due to how terrifying it is and that is Shipwrecked 64. I really like this game so I figured I'd cover some of it for today. Keep in mind that this is a Chronicles of Horror episode but also keep in mind that I'm only discussing a little over half of the game for this episode as I cannot fit everything and any your boy is a very big dumbass so I couldn't really figure out a lot of the puzzles and I'd rather just cover what I can and be honest about it from someone who has no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Welcome to the Chronicles of Horror, a series where I have no idea when I will ever actually post and I just pretend like it's consistent. Actually, now that I think about it, when was the last time I posted a video for this series anyways? Holy shit, three months. <laughs> Goddamn, I am, uh, I am very bad at this. The Chronicles of Horror is a series I came up with to pass the time by ranking games based off of the following key factors on a scale of 1 to 10. Story, mechanics, visuals, price, difficulty, sound, scares of the game, the game's concept, and of course the designs of the characters themselves. Once all of these categories are ranked, it is all pretty much just added up and put onto a tier list for the year. This is Chronicles of Horror Season 3, and I will be doing my best to do episodes at least once or twice a month if I can. Each season is around 1-2 to two episodes long, however for this season it will be around 10 or more depending on how many games I do this year. If you have any suggestions or really anything you want me to do for these videos, feel free to comment them, message me on Twitter, or put the suggestions down below in this little question answer suggestion box that I will leave in the description. I will do my best to do any games suggested, however please keep in mind I will not be doing any games that cost over like $30 for the sake of money, and will most likely do only free games games unless either given the game as like a gift on Steam or something else, I, I don't really know. I just cannot afford a ton of stuff right now, so just keep that in mind. That out of the way, let's begin. The story of the game is something I only really know bits and pieces of since again I'm only playing maybe half of the content and I'm also watching a lot of theory videos so please just give me like a break when it comes to this okay? I have no idea what I'm talking about this is just from my understanding. So from what I can tell you're playing as someone who's basically killed a bunch of people in the company because they were in the way or something like that or they wanted them to like work with them. Again, I only know bits and pieces, so this is just me trying to make the story make sense for this video. I believe you are playing as someone who is obsessed with the Bucky character, at least that's from what I can gather from like the, the screenshots and the photos, so much so that he actively wears it constantly and that freaks out a lot of people and he just kind of ends up killing three people, one of who drowns, one of who gets bashed in the head, and the other who gets a chair collided with his leg or head, I believe. It's kind of hard to tell in the videos exactly what happens, and then they like possess or inhabit the game somehow and try to, I think, make sure the dude who killed them suffers. But maybe that's just my FNAF lore brain talking, because once again, the lore of this game, at least so far, makes no fucking sense. And I'm only at the plaza, which I just found out is the hardest level of this game, and I will be getting back to that annoyance later. Now, overall, of course, from what I can tell, the story is incredibly fun. You find more stuff out about it around the world, and pieces like the tapes, and the writing on the walls and such. The only annoyance I have with this is the fact that I couldn't hear a damn recording once, or really I hardly heard some of them. I believe I heard Olive's one fine, and the Bucky one, where he loses his shit just fine, but the rest were just so damn quiet and that's not even a me issue. My volume was as loud as I could really get it due to my sensory issues, which is another issue I will also bring up later on. I think that the story could use a ton of work or better explanations for a lot of the scenes. Apparently, according to the Wikipedia as I was researching this for this video, this is off script by the way, I found out that they're actually called Starlings and they took like the dead bodies of these characters and like but it's, it's kind of like FNAF where they put them in the suits and then the suits became possessed with like the starlings or something like that and like merged with the suit. I, I'm not quite sure. The, the lore even in the Wikipedia is very confusing. And like the Bucky guy, he's the one that did all of that and then he ended up turning into one as well, I think. I think that's kind of just what it is. Now, obviously, like I said before, the story could use definitely a ton of work and... If I have to use like a Wikipedia page to understand stuff, that's kind of bad in my opinion. But everything's fine overall, I could rate it a solid 7 out of 10. The mechanics of this game 
is something I want to generally bash my brain in with. Because who the hell thought putting me in front of a platformer was a good idea? Like, I feel like you guys forget that you guys also suggested this game for me. Who thought that making me play this game for three plus hours to jump and spin and explode inside because I can't make one fucking volcano jump so your friends laugh at you? <clears throat> Anyways, the mechanics are actually really fun. You can jump and you can climb and we aren't really going to talk about the bullshit wall jumping. And there are many, many puzzles. And did I mention my hatred for puzzles? I do like some of the puzzles, obviously, so far, but I'm sorry, I'm not spending hours of my life turning on 20 TVs in 10 minutes, all the while I'm being chased by three of the starlings or whatever they're called. I think the amount of combinations kind of feels very repetitive and is a massive annoyance for me personally. Again, it's all ultimately down to personal preference. Having to do the exact same puzzle type over and over and over again while running around in the same exact area while being chased by the monsters in the game while some buttons give you fucking pop-ups out of the game, thus killing you because the monster showed up and murking you while the pop-ups happened that you have no control over, by the way. Yeah, I fucking hate that. That fucking is stupid. I understand doing pop-ups. I get- I like the help, okay? I really do. I like the hints and the lore, but my fucking god, do I hate dying because of a pop-up multiple times. Not to mention, you aren't safe while watching or looking at them unless you're hiding. Even then, there's a starling that can just kill you anyways regardless, so it's just fucked all over if a pop-up shows up. I do love the ability to go and find hidden walls, though. That was honestly a ton of fun or getting to beat the shit out of these characters when I was angry, that was also hella fun. The different mini games are, again, fun as well, they're really entertaining for me, and they really tie in things for the lore, because these mini games seem to be based off of how they died as well, which is kinda cool. Like, all of this mini game is fun, and it isn't too stressful, and I really enjoyed her parts. You know, getting the coconuts didn't really feel like a, a chore, it felt very, like, fun, and I appreciate the dev for trying these. And in her death, she ends up, again, her, like, not her herself, but the, not the otter, but the actual girl, she ends up drowning, so the fact that you're close to water is kind of, I guess, interesting. Or for, you know, the, the goose character, for instance, I kind of forget his name, but his minigame was, in my opinion, like, the weakest and the boring overall, that could have been a lot better, for sure. You kind of just keep the ovens on from burning, and while that's fine, it's just boring for me, it doesn't really do much, and frankly, having, and frankly, having something that is kind of similar to Cooking Mama or something would have been much cooler than standing around waiting, because you kind of need to stand around for some of these minigames in order to, you know, fail them to get the better stuff, like, later on, but... Yeah, and then when the guy dies, he, I believe he, I believe this is the guy that gets his head smashed into the oven, but again, it's really hard to tell for me personally. I'm kind of slow at lore, so I, I don't know. So I really like how that's also implemented. It's very cool that it's based off of his death. And for the wall versus his section is fine too. I really liked having to do the parkour and the lights going out made me fear for my fucking life. When I saw the creepy ass images moving around on the screen as the lights were out, that was a really creepy section. So thank you once again for making a great mini game. I don't actually know what the walrus is like the human version of him. Uh, his death, I think it might have been the chair, so I don't... So that one's kind of not really related to his death, which kind of sucks, but the other ones are for some reason. The Wolf's minigame was also one of the ones I really enjoyed the most. He made you kind of collect pieces of the boat while getting chased by a creepy monster thing. I think that minigame was very peak and was one of the ones I'd rank very high for. It made me feel very tense and made me feel like my life was genuinely on the line and the other minigames didn't. The artist minigame was obviously very easy and was hella boring. I really hated that one. It was, it's definitely worse than the Goose's minigame. I think it was a lot of fun, but it, it was also boring as hell. I liked seeing his art, and I love the voice actor. He's, god, he's so elegant with his voice. It's just really charming. And I, I just hated the minigame, okay? It was just really bland. As for the Volcano one, all right? Now, now that minigame pissed me off so much. The jumping made things so much harder to deal with. I couldn't jump too fast or too much without dying or doing a backflip. Or I couldn't cling on to the wall, and so I'd die. Or I'd keep dying because the controls of this game are so jank on PC. At least like keyboard and mouse. I think it is meant for controller play, but like I don't really have a controller and I feel like the controls 
could be worked on if this is such an annoyance. I did manage to beat the volcano section, but the fact it took this long really annoys me. So overall, I think the mechanics are actually really fine. I think that there's some things it could definitely work on, and the parkour hurts my soul. But overall, I would play this game more and again and again once I do beat the game. Definitely a solid 6 out of 10 here, simply because I am not a big fan or big brain enough to understand the puzzles, and I hate having to constantly get pop-ups for stuff when I'm trying to hide and not get killed. So the visuals of this game are pretty self-explanatory at this point. It gives off a very Nintendo 64 kind of style and it makes sense and the platforming is kind of reminding me of this like Bubsy platformer and I'll show that on screen if I remember, but if I do find it I hope you guys understand what I mean. The more realistic style of the characters kind of reminds me heavily of Ben Drowned and I have no idea why, it kind of just feels that way to me. I do think that the style is something I could fuck with but only for like a little while because of my eye issues it's kind of hard to watch and look at those types of styles before my eyes get hurt. I don't know if that makes sense, but if you have astigmatism in your eye like I do, you would understand what I mean. The visuals for the jump scares, puzzles, cutscenes, and more are really well made and polished for the most part. Some parts I felt really needed better like work, and obviously these parts are the plaza because sometimes it just wouldn't load and that isn't a PC issue by the way, it's a game issue. The textures would glitch, and that may be just how the game is as you progress, but I wouldn't know because again, I kind of refuse to spend an hour memorizing a stupid map and then dying constantly to the furry nation over, you know, the furry nation over there. Just, just no. Now, overall, the visuals feel very nostalgic, and I do enjoy that aspect. It just gives me a sense of happiness, so I rate this a solid 9 out of 10 for me. Just because it's rather beautiful, and I really hope he continues to make other games in a similar style, or maybe even a second shipwreck or something. Now, for $10 without tax, I think it is worth the money. There isn't a doubt in my mind that the amount of content, passion, or effort makes it worth it. The price is very reasonable, and I encourage people to play it for themselves if they would like. So for this reason, it is a solid 10 out of 10 for price. I think the difficulty for this game is really up to interpretation since again I'm not very good at puzzle ARG type things and this game really challenged me and has been ever since I started playing this game. Do I think having to go through several layers of hell is fair? No. But do I play it anyways? Y yes I do. I usually hate this level of difficulty because again I struggle a lot with this type of stuff. Uh, I did have to use a walkthrough in order to go through a lot of this for the video, so I do apologize uh, if for some reason people seem to count that as cheating. I just don't like spending hours of my life being jump scared while stressing over where to go. You know, I'd much rather just get some of it over with so I can stop using the walkthrough and focus on the real horror here, which I believe is layer 4. The difficulty from layer 1 to 3 is fine, I just fucking hate puzzles. I do also dislike the plaza, but I'm pretty sure no one else likes that place either. Like yes, it's a lovely way to introduce the main monsters of the game, but having me spend over a fucking hour trying to get 20 TVs on while being chased and jump scared stresses me the hell out and I just refuse. I can't do that. I, I don't know what else to tell you. The game itself seems to be fine overall in terms of difficulty, so I think making pop-ups appear so you have a chance of dying is fair? No. Do I complain too much? I don't think I complain enough, frankly. The only reason why I'm not ranting about the BS pop-ups or the plaza being just plain annoying as fuck to do is because I do still love this game. And I will have to continue to say this because for some reason people don't fucking read. I do love the games I cover, I just talk about the good and the bad and don't just dick ride every game because you shouldn't just say, this game is amazing and that's it. At least in my opinion. This game has a ton of flaws, but for some of those flaws, they're very positive, so it really depends on who you ask. Overall, the difficulty is like an 8.5 out of 10. Now this part for sure is definitely going to piss people off, but if I have to turn down your fucking game because of jump scares and most of the horror comes from screaming, that isn't really scary, it's just annoying. I hate horror games where they just make a lot of scares like screaming or high-pitched noise. And also, fun fact, loud doesn't equal good horror. Stop making everything so fucking loud, please. There should be an option to turn shit down, but there isn't. The music in this game is very lovely. The sound effects are fine most times. The voice acting, again, is really well done. 
But how come every sound is so fucked up and mixed weirdly? Why is the voice acting louder in some parts, but then in other layers it's quiet as hell? Why is the tape recording so damn quiet, but the jump scares are loud as hell and make me want to jump off a cliff and die? Like I love this game and all, but seriously, add an option for us to turn certain things up and certain things down. Because loud doesn't equal scary, it equals bullshit for me. The fact there isn't a setting from what I can tell for sound pisses me off. I shouldn't have to turn down my game's volume on my PC itself because the jump scares are too loud, but then I can't hear the tape recordings because I turned down my volume, which means I lose lore and other information that's very important. Do you see how one would be pissed off here? I'm trying to play the game and make a video, but I can't when I get overwhelmed and constantly hear loud screams or noises from Olive or really just really creepy ass jump scares, which yes, they're very well made, shouldn't be this fucking loud that I can't hear the damn tape recordings. I love the music however, again, the title screen music is such a banger, the ambient sound is so well made, and it really brings me into the game. I just wish the tape recordings were louder and the screeches weren't so loud. I just hate very loud noises, and again, some people may see this whole thing and say it's a positive, but for me, if I have to turn on the volume for one thing and gets ruined by another thing, it just isn't fair and ruins the experience for me, and frankly, that makes me upset. The sound is a 5 out of 10, simply for all the negatives I've already said before. The scares are actually what get me so well and makes me very excited to play this game in the first place. Despite the fact that the loudness pisses me off and makes me hate how the dev didn't really give us a sound option, I do greatly enjoy the environment and how he played off the side sections and made Olive and the others appear on the black part of the screen. I really do think that is something rather unique, and I have yet to see other games do this. I believe that some of the scares are lacking, but overall they do feel impactful and they do make me feel rather impressed by his design and ideas. You can truly tell he did put a lot of thought into this. However, some of it does feel repetitive, and with everyone's jump scares, if you get caught, they're pretty much just all the same. It does dock some points off. I'm not saying you can't do that, but like, how he's done things before, I'm just a little bit sad that they're all so similar, or downright the same exact thing, and that makes me upset. I did expect different jump scares for Bucky, and I forgot the bunny's name, the uh, artist looking one, but I expected a better one for him too. I am aware that like technically I'm not at that part, but I figured I'd mention it because I did look up their jump scares and that's very kind of lacking. I think some like olives are really well thought out and her ability to sort of spook you and follow you through makes the game feel way more immersive. Like they're on your screen and will attack you. You know, like one wrong move and you're fucked. Seeing the starlings, or sterlings, I don't really know what they're called, materializing in front of you is the scariest shit I've ever seen, and I generally don't care if it's low poly, I know the second that goose thing shows up I'm cooked and I should just go back to baking cookies in my parents' basement. The scares overall are a solid 7 out of 10 because they do feel immersive enough, and some of them are just repetitive and bland so that docks some points off. Now, the game's concept isn't exactly original, but that doesn't make it a bad thing. I think that the game's design approach and the ability to transform everything it touches into beautifully crafted horror is something I expect more in indie devs to work on going forward. The game's concept may be a bit basic, but I think that also adds to the charm as well. The game doesn't feel rushed, it doesn't feel used up and like it's the same plot as something else. It feels very original overall and I think more people should value it and really cherish it because it's not something many people bother trying to do anymore, like the garden of cash grabs and other games really fucked up the indie horror scene. The game has so much potential and I doubt he'll make a second one, but I think it would be really fun seeing more games like this from this, obviously this dev. And if he does see this video, I really do hope he makes more and if he enjoys it, you know, especially because the game has so much clear passion and love. Seeing some of the files found, you can really see it's been a project for a long ass time and that's very impressive. The game's concept is one people should look at when you're making your own game. This gets a solid 10 out of 10. Thank you for creating such a wonderful masterpiece. The designs are by far the best part to this game. I hate low poly or I guess less complex designs, but the fact that this game has both a fully realistic looking design and a not so really like realistic design of each character and the sterling or starling or whatever you want to call it designs 
really made me happy. Bucky doesn't look like any other character I've seen online in the indie scene. In fact, none of these designs look like they were taken from other games or inspired by other games, and I love that. The fact he put in so much work and it paid off with these creepy ass designs speaks volumes. I know I'm not being very detailed here, but that's just because the designs speak for themselves here. You can see them on screen and you cannot tell me they don't look badass and scary as hell. I think that we can all agree that the character designs here are a 10 out of 10 and deserves more praise from the indie horror fans. Overall, the score of this game is a 6.2 out of 5. That is the biggest score I've ever given a game so far. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you and if you have enjoyed the video, please let me know what your favorite character is. Mine is probably this little blue guy that is Loki, probably Stalker, but I don't know. Special thanks, of course, to my lovely fans who drew some fan art for my characters. I really do appreciate it, and if you have any fan art, please let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you all have an amazing day, and if you would like to be featured in a video, feel free to tag me with your fan art on Twitter or on YouTube even. Thank you guys so much, I hope you all have an amazing day, peace out guys, bye.